ICMA is shining a light on smaller communities and their leaders who are making a big impact. Joining us for today's member spotlight is Phyllis Anderson, Assistant Borough Manager for Oakmont, Pennsylvania. Phyllis hit the ground running in her local government career with one objective, to leave this world in a much better position than how she found it. With the drive to make a difference for all people, not just those in one zip code, one race, or one socioeconomic group, Phyllis is utilizing both her education and experience to tailor her agenda as assistant borough manager to make both fair and equitable decisions and policies that positively impact the services and amenities that her community has to offer its residents for many generations to come. To get things rolling, can you share what the highlight of your career has been so far? Hands down, it would have to be when I recruited goats to come into Oakmont to clear the riverbank of overgrown brush and vegetation, as well as all of the toxic and noxious plants that were down there. So it took a lot of convincing to convince council and the manager to go along with this project. They were thinking, um, Goats are way too much for us to handle, and uh, can we just do herbicides? So when I investigated the use of herbicides along the riverbank, that would mean that a big truck would come with a hose and leave the hose throughout the vegetation down to the river, spray those toxic chemicals on our plants that would get into the soil, that would eventually get into the water. And the connection to the hose and the truck, it wasn't secure. So um, herbicides would leak into the soil, into the ground. I said, no, 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 no. There has to be a better way. And one day I received a letter from Capricious LLC, which is the name of the farm that rent out goats to the community. So after meeting with the owners and talking to the manager and council, I finally convinced them to allow the goats to come in. For that reason, um, the sustainability efforts that I was working on in the last two and a half years finally started get in legs and that legitimized sustainability in the community's eyes and council's eyes and with management. So my next question is, can you describe a, a different type of challenge you faced in your career in serving a smaller community and how you were able to overcome that challenge? Uh, my biggest challenge is getting council on board with some of my out of the box innovative thinking. Um, because of the backlog in ordering uh, electric vehicles, it was a little easier to initiate uh, electric vehicle charging stations. So I partnered with a member of council and a our utility company, which is Duquesne Light in Pittsburgh. And we partnered together to get three dual port level two charger charging stations installed in our town. So to get council to agree with that, it is very difficult to get these tasks and actions and projects moved through council, but I was finally able to get that project through council and only one person dissented, but rest of the council was on board because we felt we were better able to um, install the chargers now as opposed to scrambling later on when money isn't available, grants weren't available, um, the interest would not be there because other communities around us will have installed chargers by now. That's extremely exciting. And I'm definitely seeing a trend with you on the proactive and innovative thinking. So that's that's inspiring to see that type of work. Uh, Phyllis, given your position as the leader of a smaller community, what tools and resources do you find most helpful in your work? My most useful tool is resources for assistant and deputy managers. I find that to be very helpful. I interpret and incorporate what I read and learn in those messages. I interpret them and give them to our staff so 
they would be able to apply those same trainings to their daily work as well. Uh, they, the resources teach me the position, the importance of the position. And I know that as a mid-level manager, that that's a very important role. What advice do you have for other smaller community leaders out there? The advice that I have for other smaller community members is to go out into the community, see what the members are talking about, walk the streets, see where sidewalks are affected. Through the Graduate School of Public and International Affairs is a organization called CONNECT. CONNECT is the acronym for Congress of Neighboring Communities. We meet with managers and assistant managers and council members of neighboring communities and we attack uh, regional issues so that would be my suggestion is to go out into the, to the community and get to know the residents that are in the community how has your icma membership helped you i found through icma a group called resource x Resource X is the priority-based budgeting platform leader and innovator in our industry. Priority-based budgeting allows a municipality, city, or town to look at the line items in their budget and match them up to or um, turn them into programs. And you score the programs based on how well they're needed in the community and some of the programs maybe you could get rid of. And it frees up money to allocate to other projects that may not be budgeted for. And specifically, my sustainability projects, there's no money in the budget for them. I'm going through that cohort now, and hopefully I'll be able to reallocate some of the money in our budget in the 20. 24 budget, I'll be able to use some of that money for sustainability projects. Phyllis, your passion for creating a meaningful and innovative impact on the community you serve and the profession as a whole is a true inspiration for both myself and your peers. I can't thank you enough for taking the time to share with us today. And to view more member spotlights, be sure to subscribe to our channel.